I want to show you a, a classic issue. This particular Acer laptop has a problem. This preview update has failed repeatedly and it doesn't matter how many times I try to download it and reinstall, it simply fails. So I've got a, a problem with my update, which is a common problem in Windows. But if I try to grade this Windows 11 to 24H2, it most likely will not solve this problem. If I do a clean install, there's a good chance that that problem will be wiped away and I'll not have this problem. Okay, this is my Acer laptop and I've plugged in, let's take a look. I've plugged in my flash drive over there. You can see it. And we're just going to walk through some of the basic things as we start. Now I've opened up Explorer and I'm clicking on the flash drive here is set up. So I'm just going to double click. It's going to require elevation of credentials for that app to run. And I've got an entire operating system on this Acer and we're going to see what Windows. Remember this was done by Rufus and so a lot of the requirements for Windows 11 have been circumvented by the Rufus author, as he created this flash drive, he's already edited the registry. So things like the four gigabit memory requirement, the uh, TPM requirement, those are all removed from being checked or required by this Windows installation. If you use a Windows media creation tool, that is not true. The, all the requirements will, will be had. Yes, yes, no. There we can see install Windows 11. We'll say OK. And it's going to check for updates and it's just going to do its thing. This process can take a long time. Sometimes it can take a short amount of time. It just depends on the speed of your processor, your PC, how much memory you have. All of those things will have an impact as to how fast this goes. If you have a powerful machine, it will go pretty quick. If you have a older machine. This laptop is not a new laptop, so it's going to be pokey through the process, but it will run Windows 11. Well, this is one of the first of many interactions that you have with the installation. We're going to accept. Now, if you'll notice in this portion of the update, I get the option of installing Windows Pro, keeping personal files and apps. So I can go here and change that and I can choose what I want. In this case, I don't want anything saved because this particular installation has issues and problems. I could choose the option for just personal files only. And I probably could get away with that one, but I don't have personal files on here. Let's do a clean install. That's what that means when it says nothing. We'll go ahead and go next and it's going to move on to the next stage. Well, let's continue on. Here it's warning that some features are going to be removed, obviously, and you may have to reinstall them. So we'll say OK, and then it just moves on to the next stage. So it walks through a number of interactive stages. Here we see we're going to keep nothing. Windows 11 Pro is going to be installed. We'll go ahead and say, yep, go ahead. And there we move into what's called the blue screen mode. Working with a flash drive, you can see here our flash drive is flashing. You can see carefully the LED is lighting up showing indication and so we're actually seeing the the install takes place. So keep in mind the speed of your installation is based on the processor, the memory, 
And then, of course, your download speed. If you have a very slow internet connection, a lot of this is pulling down updates. If you've got a slow connection, then that's going to drag out this whole process. So the faster internet connection, faster CPU, the more memory involved in the piece of hardware is going to improve this process. We're on the Acer laptop. You can see we're at 91% complete, so we're just about done with this portion of the install. We're getting ready to reboot. And there we go, we'll restart. I can probably pull out this flash drive now. We're done with the flash drive. But now it's installing the updates, keep the computer on. Uh, we can restart a couple of times and so we'll let that go on. Now we're back on the Acer and this screen will become very familiar to most of you that do upgrades. We're just going to walk through these real quick so you can see them. I guess there are people that use second keyboards. I don't know why but now generally Microsoft wants you to create an account using a Microsoft or some email. There's advantages to that and disadvantages that. If you install this PC with a Microsoft account, your product key is saved as a digital license. That way you can't lose it. It knows this machine, it has a hash value of the hardware, and it can, even if you reinstall, Microsoft will automatically apply that product key. So there's advantages to that. So let me go ahead and name this device. Go next. Remember, I'm going to fast forward a lot of the time that it takes to do this. In the video, this will be going fast. This is not fast. Just remember, I'm using video magic to make this quick so you're not bored to death as you watch an upgrade. But just keep in mind, this is not fast. It's very slow and time consuming. We're going to set up for work or school. Go next. Again, Microsoft wants you to use a Microsoft account. Now I'm going to sign in options. I'm not going to use a email account. I'm going to sign in and I'm going to join it to a domain. This is going to allow me to create a local account, which is exactly what I want. Remember with security questions, never put anything that someone would know about you. I'm never going to use my real pet's name. I'm never going to use the city that I was born. I'm just going to use random information because I don't want hackers to be able to use very easily obtainable data about you and use it against you. I put random information into all security questions. Location find my device, no diagnostic data. A lot of people just turn all these off. It's up to you. I generally allow diagnostic data even though I know some of it is intrusive. It's up to you what you want to allow. For privacy concerns, I would turn all of them off. We're going to again go into a state of downloading more stuff. All right, so back to our Acer. Oh, I'm logging on with the new, notice this is an indication that it's creating a profile. It is doing that right now. By the way, previously I showed you where it was doing some updates 
if I would have kept it on the screen, you would have seen things like games you could play while you're waiting for the upgrade. I thought that was pretty innovative of Microsoft. If you're sitting in front of the computer watching this long ordeal, they actually gave you some screen games you could play while you're doing the upgrade. Pretty cool. We are up. We want to take a look and we'll notice I'm going to immediately go here and we'll see that we have some updates. Even though we just installed, you can see that there are a number of updates that you still have to add. And again, remember, this is a physical machine. I also want to go and make sure there are, and notice there are eight drivers. You want to make sure if you're doing a physical machine, not a virtual machine, you add all the drivers that Microsoft recognizes for this hardware. We're going to include that in the update. Download and install all. And it's starting that process. So you want to go ahead and do that. Now, in my case, I'm going to do control panel. I'm old school. Control panel is very important to me because it gives me access quickly. As an admin, I want to go to network and I want to modify my DNS because this is on a domain in my case that's very very important. I'm going to specify DNS. These are my domain controllers and that will allow me to very easily add this to the domain. Say OK. We're also going to come and check the name of the computer and make sure it's right. Oh, we're done. Okay. Let's go to System About. Look at the name of the computer. Acer. Good. And before we go ahead and reboot, let's go ahead and add it to the domain. And this is my domain information. Now, I don't like this keyboard. I typically buy cheap keyboards and always regret it because cheap keyboards are cheap keyboards. I should immediately see my credential dialog box from my domain controller. I may have mistyped it. Let's see here. There's my security dialog box. This is coming from my Active Directory domain controller. Put in my credentials and I've joined the domain. Now I can reboot and install my various updates and drivers as well as put me on the domain. We'll go ahead and let that do that. It's going to install drivers, some update to the software and put me on the domain. All in one fail swoop. Not quite sure why I'm getting that menu option. Normally that should just boot up. I'll have to check and see what, what new problem I have done. Here we can watch the Acer boot up and I don't see any of the temporary cursor displays that we saw on the Lenovo. That was very interesting. Lenovo's are very interesting PCs. They do things that nobody else does. Not necessarily good. All right, let's go ahead and log on. Now, if you'll notice, I have the option of an other user that indicates the domain and we'll go ahead and log on to the domain. And we've successfully logged on. You can tell again the profile creation because this is a new user on this clean install. I get a new profile. Okay, we are there. We're on the domain. We are, let's check our updates just to verify. Computer's correct. How about that? Even more updates. Don't you love it? So we'll let those go ahead and work through. We're going to go ahead and go to the Microsoft Store. We'll add Syst internals and syst internal suite and terminal I use that for my all my command line and PowerShell 
activity and we'll just close those down basically we're in good shape this is ready to go now you can add your applications and customize it from this point on when you go to our channel homepage, you can just become a member by simply joining because YouTube is simply giving less and less of our ad revenue to the content creators. That's the way they do it. There's nothing I can do about it, but they do give us the option of membership, which allows you to help us produce this material. Listen, if I produce content on how to create port tenderloin, I could get 50,000 views per video and we wouldn't have this conversation about becoming a member. That would generate plenty of ads, plenty of revenue. We wouldn't even have this conversation. But the content I produce is technical. You couldn't get five of your family members to sit down and watch five minutes of my video. They'd all die behind you. So this is content for IT professionals, IT enthusiasts, people that really like this type of material. And so the viewership is going to be low. Become a member, $2.99 a month. Google takes 30% of that also, but we need your help. Become a member, support the channel. It allows us to continue to produce good technical content. And if it doesn't benefit you, then I fully understand. But if you find that these videos help you understand technical content, I encourage you, become a member. Thank <laughs> you.